Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining our Google Hangout in the run-up to the third international conference on small island developing states. Uh, it will take place from 4, 1 to 4 September in Apia, Samoa. Today, we'll be discussing challenges that youth in small island developing states face, and also what young people on these islands are doing to promote sustainable development. My name is Matthias Klettemeyer. I'm the social media focal point at UNDESA's Division for Sustainable Development, and I will be moderating this Hangout. Uh, we have a fantastic panel with us. It's a great honor that we have the Secretary General of the SIDS conference with us today, Mr. Wu Hongbo, uh, who is also Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs. Welcome, Mr. Wu. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome. We also have uh, Karuna Rana here with us, who is Deputy Organizing Partner for SIDS uh, of the UN Major Group of Children and Youth. Uh, glad you can join us, Karuna. Thank you, Matthias. I'm glad I can join as well. And I must add that uh, Karuna is joining from Mauritius, where it's, I think, 11.30 p.m. So uh, thank you very much for staying up late to hang out with us. That's uh, uh, very kind of you. We also, no have Alex, <laughs> we also have Alex Cumberbatch with us, who is a SIDS youth representative from uh, Barbados. He's a representative from the Caribbean region. Greetings, Alex. Greetings to you, Matthias, and everyone else who is listening. Happy to be here. I also want to welcome Krishni Apadu in Mauritius, uh, so also staying up late for us. She is SIDS youth representative for the Ames region for UNESCO, and she's also the SIDS focal point for Ames region for the UN Major Group of Children and Youth. Uh, thanks for taking the time uh, to join us, uh, Krishni. Hello, everyone. Good, good to be here. Uh, and, of course, we also have Mole Homazi with us, who is um, focal point for Samoa for the UN Major Group of Children and Youth and also representative of the Samoan National Youth Council. And whereas uh, Krishni and Karuna uh, are staying up very late for us, uh, Molly got up very early for us. Uh, in Samoa, it's uh, 8.30 a.m. now on Friday, so we actually have a panelist talking to us from the future, so we indeed have a very special panel. Uh, welcome, Molly. Greetings, everybody. Talofa, and thank you for having me on board. And looking forward to a very productive uh, discussion. Thank you. Welcome. Um, just for our viewers, remember that you can send us comments and questions by using the hashtag uh, islands2014. We'll try to answer some of these questions during the Hangout. Uh, the ones we can't answer, we'll uh, do this after the event. Um, I just thought I should mention uh, the acronym for Small Island Developing States, because I'm sure you'll hear it a lot uh, in the coming hour, and this is SIDS. So SIDS stands for Small Island Developing States. Um, and now I will hand over to the Conference Secretary General, Mr. Wu, for his introductory statement. Mr. Wu, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Matis. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody. I would like to um, warmly welcome our distinguished youth representatives uh, at this panel, and also all those who are watching at this moment. It is really my great pleasure to have this opportunity to exchange views about youth in the small island developing states, especially uh, with the panelists from three seas regions. I really want to begin by under, uh, underlining the great importance of the seas conference, not only for seas themselves, but for international community, for everyone. It will focus on the world's attention on the group of countries that have uh, special vulnerabilities. They are unique in their own. So this is a very important opportunity for the international community. The conference will look at how far we have come at this moment in addressing all those vulnerabilities and what more we need to do to tackle all these challenges. It will seek a renewed political commitment 
and it will identify new and emerging challenges and opportunities for the sustainable development of seeds. It will also aim to identify priorities for the sustainable development of seeds to be considered in the post-2015 development agenda. As we all know, sea level rise and other adverse impacts of a climate change among the sea's vulnerabilities that must be addressed urgently. These islands face economic problems that result from the factors such as their small size, remote location, and high cost for energy. Seeds are also facing social challenges linked to education, unemployment, and non-communicable diseases, just among other issues. But we must remember that seeds, when we talk about them, they are also an important source of solutions that can help us adapt to the changing situation. So in addition to considering their vulnerabilities, we should not forget that they are resourcefulness and we need to listen to learn to emulate their resourcefulness. And today we want to learn and listen from you, our panelists. You have impressive track records of improving your communities. I look forward to hanging out with you to discuss how to improve seeds for youth. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that statement, uh, Mr. Wu. And uh, let's t turn to our youth panelists and let's uh, start to start by listening and learning from Karuna, because I know that Karuna has a lot of experience in uh, representing youth in intergovernmental processes, such as climate change negotiations, such as Rio Plus 20. Uh, so Karina, Karuna, could you uh, give us some advice for young people, uh, how they can best engage um, in the SIDS conference and also for sustainable development in general? Thank you, Matthias, and um, hi to everyone, um, especially my young colleagues who are listening to me. So, um, yes, I mean, these processes can sound a bit overwhelming. There's the CIS conference, there's the post-2015 development agenda. But, um, yeah, I'd like to share some of the tips that um, have, uh, which have been helpful to me over the past few years. And uh, first of all, uh, and the most important point would be to come prepared. So do your homework, know the topic, know what are your policy issues. Uh, what is being discussed on the table, uh, read some background documents and negotiation texts. For example, for the CIS conference, it would be very beneficial to read the Barbados Program of Action, the Mauritius Strategy of Implementation, because a lot will be discussed about uh, what has been implemented and what is not. And um, also, do read the negotiation texts um, so far. For example, uh, the outcome document called the Summer of Hawkways is already out on the CIS2014.org website, so it would be good to go and read where are we so far and what has been discussed at the preparatory meeting which um, took place a couple of weeks back in New York. Um, the second thing is know the movers and shakers um, of the game. Um, know who's on the steering committee of the conference, who's on the drafting committee, uh, which member state, maybe your member state, if not your member state, maybe some other member state could support you, could support young people in their positions. So it'd be good to know that and already um, create a contact. Um, thirdly, form strategic partnerships, not just with the other civil society organizations, but also with governments, as I said, and um, specifically with your own government. Um, your government might want to work with you with other civil society organizations. They would want to hear um, from you. Um, for example, back in Mauritius, uh, we just had a meeting at the, um, at the beginning of this week uh, where we, the Mauritian government with, uh, met with civil society organizations to hear about the views, um, uh, our views on uh, what we want to take to Samoa. So that's just an example. And then get involved in the process from a very early stage. 
Uh, most of the negotiation texts, they already uh, get decided, closed for inputs prior to the meeting. So it would be good to know what the process has been. I know at this point um, of time, we've already finished the preparatory meeting. But um, uh, we've been lucky that uh, we've had the support of UNESCO and other UN agencies who prepared us and got us involved in the process since last year, since the regional preparatory meetings. And last not the least, um, I'd like to um, invite young people to make use of the UN Major Group for Children and Youth, which is the official constituency, the official mechanism um, for young people, any young person under the age of 30, to participate in social development negotiations. It doesn't matter if you're going to somewhere or not, you would still be able to participate and share your inputs um, by the Major Group for Children and Youth. And we, the website is childrenyouth.org. So um, I hope this helps. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, <clears throat> Karuna. I'm sure it does help. Uh, I'm sure it does. Now I'd like to go to uh, Samoa, to Molly. And um, maybe uh, Molly can give us a bit of an idea. What are the top priority issues for uh, youth in the Pacific region? Thank you, Matthews. Um, from Samoa and the Pacific itself, there are a few of the cross-cutting issues that impact uh, our young people especially in our region as a whole. But uh, I think the first key priority is uh, speaking of capacity building in terms that we, we, we feel that the Pacific recognizes the need for continued capacity building for our young people and uh, as, as well as the youth-led uh, organizations like Samo National Youth Council, Pacific Youth Council and uh, all other councils in the region. Uh, in terms of the cross-cutting issues, uh, Somehow we came together for a prep meeting in uh, Nandi and it wasn't just uh, small issues there. Our Pacific youth saw these issues as a uh, very um, high of high importance in which in terms of education first, uh, we would like to have access to uh, quality education and in terms of employment we would want to see job opportunities for youth considering both the formal and informal sectors. Speaking of informal sectors there are a lot of uh, we see the better chance of us especially the from the formal sector itself it's very hard un unless you get the quality and the qualification to get into uh, great jobs and good job opportunities but in terms of informal uh, sector we would like to see this uh, this site uh, trying to come up and uh, enhance it in a better way uh, thirdly entrepreneurship in terms of providing the youth with all aspects leading to up to ownership and understanding their economic involvement in the SIDS region as well as in the global states, uh, especially also in our own Pacific region and Samoa as well. Fourthly, I can uh, state climate change and biodiversity, how uh, Mr. Wu had mentioned our vulnerability and our country sizes and everything. So we fear that the inclusion of uh, children and youth in disaster risk risk management projects, partnerships and enabling youth to contribute effectively to policy development, uh, social mobilization at grassroots level, national and international level. And the last one is social inclusion. Um, we see that in trying to overcome Pacific region has a very uh, strong cultural background and I'm not so sure about our uh, other panelists in their own uh, respective countries but in the Pacific region we have our very own unique cultures to every single country and we feel that sometimes the culture tends to uh, overstep our views nowadays in trying to move forward as youth ourselves so by overstepping uh, or trying to uh, overcoming these cultural barriers is through developing and uh, trying to deliver uh, a delivery process through BA education programs on sexual reproductive health uh, as well as health in terms of allowing safe spaces for youth a youthly, youth friendly uh, uh, sexual reproductive health information and services and so forth so all in all we look into uh, creating a uh, Hopefully, after the SIDS conference, we will be able to come about uh, better production and a great result in terms of uh, better educated youth and employed youth population contributing to a sustainable future, healthy young people for sustainable development, and young Pacific climate change warriors. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so, so much for that, Molly. Um, maybe we can have uh, the views from the Caribbean now. So I turn to Alex now. Uh, are the priority issues the same or similar? Are they very different? 
uh, please um, give us your view. Thank you, Matthias. Yes, the views are pretty much the same. It while well, we discussed here in the Caribbean and for and afterwards as we came together in Barbados last year and we discussed our different issues, we found out that the issues are generally the same in the sense that here in the Caribbean, um, education, um, as Molly would have stated, is one of our top, top priorities. Where we see that here in the Caribbean, um, persons are very literate. Um, a lot of young people go to university level, yes, but we see a need to improve our core training and this one aligns with where we would like to see um, unemployment and job opportunities go and entrepreneurship go. We would like to see that um, in the smaller classes, core education areas that greater improvement or um, attention is given to students where they can not be so afraid of going and developing their business, but they can learn the core issues and of entrepreneurship, of business development, of living and working, working um, in the Caribbean and the rest of the world on their own and not depending on government to give them a particular job. So education is one of them. Good governance is also another area. Um, climate change. Here in the Caribbean, we are seeing a lot of new phenomenons. Um, before, we would not have heard of earthquakes in the Caribbean region, but um, for the past few years we've been feeling tremors and earthquakes and we can see it's an impact of climate change. So we want to, to see more attention given to our preparedness for youth and for the general public because we, we want to be able to a little, be a, a little bit more prepared for the different natural disasters here in the Caribbean. Um, healthcare is another issue of, of concern for young people and social protection. Um, there is an, an increase in crime in a number of our countries and we want to be able to um, band together as young people and allow to give other young people and older ones alike uh, a different way out. Um, unemployment, as I would have mentioned, is one of the key areas and I know we would discuss it probably a little bit more. So I just want to say that although we have many of these issues, what we are finding is that there are only a small amount of young people who are sharing their voices. So we would like to see um, young people within the Caribbean come together more to share our views and to let the, the decision makers know this is what we are concerned about. So while we have those top issues, we want more young people to come together and share their voice. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, so I'll hand uh, right over to Krishni. Maybe you can share uh, the view from the Ames region. Yes, um, thank you. Um, actually, there are many pressing priorities um, that you have uh, in the Ames reg SIDS region, but um, I'm sure we will agree that these issues are common to all youth in all the free SIDS regions, so maybe I'll be repeating myself. And uh, we, at the AIMS level, um, at the AIMS SIDS level, uh, we have identified some pressing concerns that we raised at the Seychelles um, Youth Preparatory Conference, which was held last year. And uh, one of the main issues is that the youth want to see a more um, a good governance, effective governance at all levels of government, the private sector and the civil society engagement. And uh, we also are very concerned by access to food, water, and also issues such as energy security, um, climate change. And as um, 
Mr. Wu has highlighted, small island developing states are really, really vulnerable to climate change. So young people want to see more engagement from young people themselves and from the state and from the private sector on climate change adaptation and mitigation. And also, as my colleagues from the Pacific and the Caribbean regions have highlighted, we young people from the SIDS, we want more access to quality education because we can agree that education is provided, but what about quality? What about uh, giving access to people who do not have the means or the opportunities to go through the normal education system? So we want each and every child to be provided with a basic education. Also, we would like to see more economic opportunities uh, for young people and um, employment, unemployment is a huge, huge problem, especially since there is no, uh, there is no means to bridge the gap between um, university level and the workplace and many young people we see in the SIDS uh, do not have the means to prepare themselves for the world of work. So we want to encourage uh, young people to become more adaptable and to be more employable. And also I think a huge um, concern, um, a big concern for um, youth from the SIDS region would be access to um, uh, technology and enhanced um, IT connectivity. That's um, a concern that has been raised by many young people uh, at the uh, youth preparatory conference which was held in Seychelles last year. So we believe that in this world of technology and social media, uh, IT connectivity is really important, especially if we want to work together with other youth from the Pacific and the Caribbean region. So we want to have interconnectivity between islands. And um, we also really need to educate youth on environmental issues and sustainable development and provide youth with tools, strategies and grassroots action plans, as well as technical know-how and financial means to start their own NGOs. So I think these are a few issues that we really want to see raised um, at the Samoa conference. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Krishni. Just for uh, those viewers not familiar with the term AIMS uh, region, I just want to clarify, it stands for the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean and South China Sea region. Um, now, of course, um, the panelists here with us today have the great opportunity of being on the same panel as a conference secretary general. So we'd like uh, them to ask him a couple of questions. And I'd like uh, um, to suggest um, or invite Alex to start. Um, Alex, would you have a question for Mr. Wu? Yes, I do. Mr. Wu, with approximately 1.8 billion youth in existence worldwide and youth only being mentioned in the Millennium Development Goals once in the contents of employment, what steps are being taken going forward for issues outlined as important to youth to be included in the SIDS agenda and also going forward to the post-2015 framework? Thank you very much, Alex. I think you have asked the right, right question. And the discussions we have in the United Nations um, of the 193 member states is about people, about the future generations. So whatever we are going to produce for the future are really people-centered. And in this respect, the young people are naturally important and they are included in any of the future plans. And I think some of the uh, possible steps to be taken by the international community, in particular by youth organizations and NGOs, are identified, are touched upon by many of you uh, in your previous remarks. I would like to share with you my uh, views on the possible steps that will be taken to enhance youth and to give more play the important role of the young people in the future. First, I would like to say quality education and productive employment. 
I think this is mentioned several times already. Without which, I think the international community, including the seeds, cannot achieve sustainable development. And if we could ensure a successful quality education at all levels, surely we will find a better way to address many other issues. For instance, the uh, issues related to health, for example. And secondly, I would like to identify the area of uh, strengthening active citizenship, respect for cultural diversity. I think this is also mentioned by our distinguished panelists. And also prevention of non-discrimination, uh, uh, prevention of the diseases and non-discrimination and the environmental consciousness. I think this is the way that we can enhance the people's awareness for the sustainable development um, program in SEEDS. And thirdly, I also like to touch upon the issue of entrepreneurship and innovation. I think these are very important for creating jobs, decent jobs, and through uh, private and the public uh, projects. And these are very important for young people who suffered most uh, in today's uh, world. And I also like to say that the application of information technology is also very important. In comparison with other generations, I think young people throughout the world in a much better position to make best use of the advanced uh, technologies to achieve sustainable development. And we believe that the wealth of culture is also a driver and the enabler for sustainable development. And we do hope that indigenous and traditional knowledge and the cultural expressions will encourage the young people to work together to achieve sustainable development gender. I can assure you that the young people, people, young people in SIDS, you have a great role to play in the future. Many of your concerns are covered in the outcome document, hence in the post-2015 development agenda, which, which will be lo officially launched next year in September 2015. Thank you very much. Thank you very much um, <clears throat> for, the, for your answer. I saw that uh, Molly just dropped out, but I think uh, she should be back soon. Um, so I'll go on to uh, suggest um, that, uh, Mr. Wu, uh, it goes both ways, of course. Would you have a question for our panelists that you would like to ask them? Thank you very much, uh, moderator, uh, for giving this uh, opportunity to ask question to our panelists. My question is, could you each give me an example of a youth project in SEEDS that inspired young people to get involved on the issues of a sustainable development. What particularly made its compact impact so high? Thank you. Uh, Karuna, would you like to go first? Yes, um, thank you, Matthias, and thank you, Mr. Hu, for the question. So, um, to reply that, I'd, had, I'd, um, I'd refer to the Ames region, uh, where I am from, I'm from Mauritius. So, um, um, i just add to what Krishni said. As she said, we had um, the regional meetings organized by UN agencies for young people last year. And uh, when it comes to the Ames region, 
um, the biggest um, the, the biggest challenge that we had in the Ames region is that compared to the Pacific and the Caribbean, which are quite um, close in terms of geography, but also very well structured, the Ames region kind of um, um, is you know, dispersed, disintegrated, and lacks a bit of synergy. So the biggest um, um, commitment that we young people um, took uh, in the outcome document um, from the meetings of Seychelles was that we need to create a legal entity. We need to create something led by young people for the in, in the Ames region. So the example I want to give is um, the organization, which is called the CIS Youth Ames Hub. And um, Ames um, does it stand for the uh, region Ames. Um, it's a youth-led uh, inter-island uh, inter um, NGO uh, that was founded uh, after the AIMS meeting, as I said. And it, was, it just got officially founded in February this year, uh, in line with the SIPS 2014 process. And it regroups young people from um, the AIMS region um, to work um, towards advancing youth-led sustainable development in the AIMS region using um, ARC, as we call it, which is um, Advocacy, Research, and Community Development. Some of our priorities are volunteer, uh, volunteerism, but also a lot of um, environmental issues. Uh, now, the reason that this made a difference is that um, it's the first kind of network organization that regroups young people in the Ames region, something that didn't exist before. And um, as I said, um, the Ames region being quite disintegrated and you know lacking synergy, the existence of um, this NGO, um, the City of Ames Hub, um, proves that synergy can be achieved in the Ames region and um, um, it can be done by young people. This is a very good example, which I think um, governments can learn from as well. But um, the, uh, the other reason and the other, uh, the other reason it's working and uh, the impact that it's had is creating partnerships, which is also the theme of the CIS conference. Now, although um, the CIS Youth Aims Hub is a completely youth-led um, uh, organization, we, we have partners from different sectors one of the key partners is the Indian Ocean Commission, from, uh, with, uh, which with whom we just signed a three-year uh, MOU. And uh, this, the, Indian Ocean uh, the Indian Ocean Commission, for those who don't know, is an intergovernmental organization um, in the region, in the Indian, Indian Ocean region. But we've also managed to create partnerships with the private sector. We work, for example, one of our partners is the ENL Foundation in, um, in Mauritius. So um, I think this is a very good example, and it really inspired young people in the Ames region to work together. The, the board of um, this NGO comprises of young people from um, five uh, countries of the Ames region. And um, for example, just today we've uh, managed to have uh, young people do something for the global, um, uh, the SIDS Youth Global Day of Action, not just in Mauritius, but also in Seychelles and Maldives. So I think, um, I, I think this is a very good example that we can learn from, from the Ames region. Thank you so much, Karuna. Uh, Krishni, would you like to go next? Yes. Um, so, um, as Karuna has uh, just highlighted, I think um, we can safely say that uh, one of the main uh, issues for the Ames uh, region and um, the youth have um, identified that there there's really a lack of synergy between all the islands and also a lack of synergy even between youth organizations um, on uh, the island, exam on islands, example in Mauritius. I'm using an example from Mauritius because that's where I'm from. And um, I think that one of um, an, uh, an initiative, and it's not a project, but it's an initiative which uh, really, for me, I, I think that it had an impact and it was successful in terms of raising awareness on sustainable issues and uh, environmental issues um, in Mauritius was it was a, a, an initiative of the uh, Port Louis Hub which is the which is an initiative um, uh, of the Global Shapers community and this was uh, an initiative which was done in collaboration with um, as Karuna has uh, mentioned it, uh, the um, uh, a collaboration between Karuna, um, what she has just mentioned about um, the the SIA, which is uh, an NGO which has just been set up uh, in the Ames region, and so they, uh, it was a collaboration between the Port Louis Hub uh, and this and SIA. Uh, so that was for World Environmental Day and um, World Oceans Day. So um, it was a youth competition on the theme of Seeing Blue. Um, so it created greater awareness among young people in Mauritius about the importance of our oceans because the competition was a painting, poetry, uh, essay writing um, style uh, competition 
uh, and you uh, were asked to um, to pinpoint to uh, their concerns and what they thought would be uh, strategies to um, to solve uh, environmental problems and to save our oceans. So I think uh, the impact that this pro that this initiative had, even though it was a really small initiative, but the impact was that it made us realize that young people really are concerned about um, sustainable development and, and are really concerned about uh, sea level rise, the state of our oceans, and if really they are given the opportunity to display the engagement for sustainable development, then I think um, there is really hope ahead and I think youth can really make things change on in small island developing states. Thank you so much. Um, maybe let's have uh, uh, Alex next with an example. Thank you, Matthias. And may I start with why this project was successful? And it's because of what the, the other two panelists have been saying, the partnerships that have been um, formed to make these projects work. Um, this project were called the Youth Innovation Project, or Youth In for short. Um, it was implemented, or is being implemented, by the United Nations Development Program in Barbados and the OECS in collaboration with the Caribbean community, um, CARICOM for short. And it really came out, out of a document that, a report called the Eye on the Future, Investing in Youth Now for Tomorrow's Community, which showed that young people within the Caribbean region, they want more action. And this project focused on five key areas, volunteerism, entrepreneurship, arts and culture, a youth think tank, and youth participation. Now, within these areas, there were a number of activities that involved youth. Um, for example, there were arts and film training where um, young people were able to gain training in, in videography and to apply their talents to producing outputs like videos that were applicable to sustainable development. Um, there were also business development training and competitions, one of them which, called, which was called the Caribbean Innovation Challenge, where young people were first trained to develop um, business plans and marketing plans and through the process they competed for um, the, the top prize so even though one person might have won the competition, there were many young people who were able to develop their business and move ahead and form networking connections. Um, the youth think tank, um, there were about 14 young people from different Caribbean islands that first came together for capacity training and then power was given to them to discuss among themselves what are the core issues and then develop plans and projects that will impact other youth and this is still in function today and then youth participation where there were a number of meetings held that allowed youth to give their ideas on on volunteerism and uh, on other aspects that that promote social development social and, and sustainable development. So this is a multifaceted project and it was impactful, like I said, because of the interaction between UN agency, UNDP, the Caribbean community, and the many different youth organizations within the Caribbean. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex, and I see Molly's back. Uh, Molly, um, did you hear the question that Mr. Wu posed? If you would like to answer, then uh, go ahead. Uh, hi, yes. Uh, given the question, uh, we do have, in stating our key areas and or key priority issues that uh, I have mentioned earlier, uh, we do have a few examples of uh, these main 
important aspects in our region. Of course, we have education, and uh, just two weeks ago, Samoa hosted uh, through its uh, private sector and uh, stakeholders. They were hosting a um, literacy week in which they have in trying to cater for access to quality education. They are. Uh, they've managed to come up with this uh, small project in which they come together and offer the primary school uh, kids a, a chance to stand up and read uh, English, someone or whichever language uh, they could have uh, offered. Second, uh, in terms of health, uh, Red Cross are doing a very uh, good job in uh, Samoa. So involving youth, uh, they have been uh, doing a lot of training around and uh, also in preparation for SITS itself, they are putting up a uh, few teams, uh, train them to make sure that they uh, know what they, they will be dealing with in terms of uh, our SITS uh, participants coming into Samoa as well as the the conference itself. Also we do uh, recognize the World Topago Day. Uh, we do see the, in the effect of Topago in our own region, as we know that uh, in the Pacific we do have uh, some sort of a cu custom towards uh, smoking. This is done by men mostly, and uh, if we do encourage this through our youth and them to see, then it's a bit uh, um, unencouraged for us to, to try and cater this because uh, it, it's sort of a, like a genealogy sort of uh, attitude where you see your, your father holding the cigarette and then at the end of the day you will be holding your, your own cigarette as well. Uh, in terms of social inclusion, uh, inclusion SNYC uh, last year they hosted a youth and alcohol campaign in trying to cater to um, uh, linking to sexual reproductive health. Uh, with employment, we are working closely with uh, WIPD. They have a uh, Pacific uh, region uh, network in which they bring their model around in terms of organic farming. So using organic farming, they are also helping the Pacific youth trying to come in and see, uh, manage to see avenues, channels or gateways through uh, employment in trying to get themselves to do some sort of work and earn money instead of uh, relying on the qualifications and everything just to wait for a, a better job opportunity. Instead there are other ways like uh, agricultural um, on the informal sector where they have such uh, great opportunities in which uh, already we are preparing uh, 10 youth groups from around Samoa and they will be joining in uh, to showcase their products uh, during the SITS conference. Uh, in terms of climate change and biodiversity, um, we had experienced Cyclone Evan two years ago and through this, after the cyclone, there was a, a uh, mobilization of youth groups from around the urban area and there was a truck also that helped them around the country to try and do cleanup work and uh, so it did um, it did show and try to encourage the youth to come together and work together so yes thank you uh, great uh, thank you uh, I just I think Molly when you dropped out I was just about to ask you if you have a question for Mr. Wu um, didn't get around to doing that, but if you have one, then um, if you'd like to ask it now. Sure, I'd love to. Um, Mr. Wu, at the Rio Plus uh, 20 conference, a new path towards reducing poverty, advancing social equity, and ensuring environmental protection was being shaped. Sustainable development, <coughs> education, and youth were all on the agenda and became crucial components in shaping this new path. So my question is, what difference would the third international conference on SIDS make in taking forward the need for better quality and access to education beyond the primary level of youth? Well, <clears throat> Yes, Mr. Wu, uh, if you would like to answer. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our panelists for sharing their success stories. 
I think many of the areas um, they covered are very important. I heard uh, several times that the partnership has been mentioned. This is also main theme of the third international conference on SITS. Um, what we look at is now to find genuine and uh, sustainable partnership. So you are having your fingers in the right spot. Now I come to uh, Molly's question. This is very important. And the, the, the quality uh, of education. I think this is the most important um, factor that will ensure the future sustainable development for generations to come. And I would not uh, make uh, um, early conclusion what the Third International Conference uh, would do in the future, but by observing the discussions among the member states so far, I, I think we can have some uh, major factors in mind that may uh, form the future actions for the member states. And uh, first is the quality education, and that should be placed in a priority position. The quality education, not only for a small number of people, for people at all levels. This is very important. And the second point is the increase of investment in education. And that's a broader sense. That would in include education, training, and skills development for all. That really would be able to help us to create decent jobs, to find a productive and inclusive economic growth. And I would like to stress one point. Vocational training is very important. If you look at some of success con successful countries, like Germany, to train a large number of young people with professional skills that only, not only, find opportunities for them to, to work, but also there's a great boost to the national economy. And thirdly, I would like to say that all means will be used to enhance the quality of education. And starting from the basic education to the second edu secondary education, from school to work. So people will be educated from the very beginning to the time when they find their job and they find themselves qualified for those job opportunities. And also I would like to say that we have to look at various forms of education, <clears throat> formal and non-formal, and also special means of teaching, for instance, distance teaching. This has all been brought in onto board because distance teaching is very um, suitable for small island states because they are far away from uh, the big cities and the good teachers are not easy to come by, but by using the method for distance teaching, I think they have easy access to good lectures, to good teachers. I think that uh, I would say that the Third International Conference on SITS will make important difference in the field of quality education. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, could we now have uh, Krishni ask uh, her question to Mr. Wu? Um, Krishni? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wu, um, as we are going into the SIDS conference and also as we want more engagement from you from all the uh, SIDS regions, um, I wanted to ask you uh, what terms of, in terms of engagement from you, what do you expect from you from maybe the aims 
SIDS region or all of the regions, what do you expect in terms of engagement and action um, and strategies that you would want to see from young people in terms of sustainable development um, on small islands? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wu, uh, you would need to unmute your microphone, please. Okay. Thank you. You know, okay. I, I will start again. Thank you very much for, for this important question. I think the member states and the Secretariat of the United Nations are fully aware the participation and involvement of young people are very important. So the conference designed in such a way that we will have your participation as much as possible. For instance, before um, the conference officially opens on the 1st of September, there's a pre-conference uh, event, that's Youth Forum. And the young people will be represented through major groups in that forum for exchange of views to have your voice heard, but also participate in some other um, activities like the um, plenary sessions and the partnership uh, dialogues. And what I would like to suggest as youth organizations, as youth representatives, uh, first you may do something within your capacity to raise the awareness of the importance of a SIDS. You have the modern means of communication. You have the energy, and you have a lot of friends. I think you can do that will be great help. Secondly, just express your views, your concerns, more importantly, your suggestions through the youth representatives who are going to um, appear for the conference or through the uh, UN and you and that's a website. Make your suggestions. Have your voice heard. Thirdly, if possible, I would like to invite you to register your youth partnership projects with the conference secretariat. And if possible, you make announcement in APIA on what kind of a partnership project you're going to launch. You will be most welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I just want to see if Karuna, uh, do you have anything to add? Any other question you would like to ask? Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, I, um, I think I'm fine for now because I was about to ask a question about um, you know getting the tips and advice for how can young people be. Um, you know, participate in the conference more effectively, and um, you know, what's the secretary are doing to ensure your participation in the conference? But I think it's already been answered. So um, thank you very much, Mr. Hu. Uh, thank you very much. Then I will throw in one question that we got from uh, social media, because we got a couple of those as well. Um, it was Randir Kumar um, referred to the question of youth uh, development and uh, women's empowerment in a post uh, uh, on Facebook. And so how can we promote the empowerment of women in SIDS and with what impact? Um, who would like to uh, give this question a go? OK, uh, Mr. Wu, please. OK. Well, the impact of uh, promoting gender equality is well known. Gender equality and women's empowerment have a transformative and multiplayer effect on sustainable development. They are well established drivers of economic growth. That's why the Secretary General, Mr. Pan Ki Moon himself, personally concerned about the gender issue. And the United Nations are pushing as much as we can, as much as we can, to 
make sure that the gender balance will be achieved. And we are also supporting the CIS efforts to eliminate all forms of discrimination against women and girls and to strengthen women's economic empowerment and their equal access to full and productive employment and decent jobs and decent works, as well as entrepreneurship opportunities and the new technologies. And we must end, I, I think that the um, third international conference on SIDS was sent this message to the outside world. We must end all forms of violence against women and girls, as well as guarantee equal access to good quality education and health. Um, another point I would like to stress is the women can be powerful agents of a change if we do not empower women and girls we all lose together thank you very much thank you so much for that uh, answer we uh, only have five more minutes left which is uh, you know uh, time flies when you're having fun uh, so I'm sorry we, we won't have uh, more time for uh, questions but I'd like to ask uh, each of the panelists to give a short closing statement and if there's something that you want to mention which is really important to you, then feel free to add it there. Um, but uh, um, yeah, please uh, um, keep short if possible. I will uh, start with Alex. Uh, Alex, please, for your closing statement. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthias. Um, in closing, I'm just very happy to see the, the involvement of youth in the lead up to the the SIDS meeting in, in Samoa. Um, for SIDS to move ahead together, we must work together and I'm happy to see youth from SID, from the Caribbean SIDS and Ames region and the Pacific region coming together already um, at this stage to discuss and to put ahead our views. So I want for, for SIDS to, to move ahead we have to work together and the young people in SIDS have to work together so let's try to get as many other young people involved in moving and head the, the SIDS agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, Molly, could I ask you uh, to be next for your closing statement? Yes, thank you, uh, Matthias. Uh, first off, uh, before saying my closing statement, I would like to uh, raise one uh, small issue here. Uh, uh, leading up to our SIT conference, we are hosting a youth forum in which um, my dear colleagues, the panelists here, will be joining us, except for Mr. Alex. So. Um, uh, our social media campaign has launched uh, yesterday, what we call the SITSTERS campaign. And uh, we would like to invite all the young sister, sister as in sits with the T E R S. Uh, this represents the sits youth and uh, kids, uh, youngsters, in long form. So it was launched yesterday, and we would like to invite uh, all the through our network here as well. We would like to invite everybody to take part as well. Uh, we will be launching a selfie. Uh, we have already launched a selfie campaign, which uh, states to harness the power of social media in our communities of young people. Uh, thank you. Having said that, uh, I would like to, from the Pacific region itself, uh, to raise just a little bit of a, a small uh, story that really matters to us during our prep meeting uh, for the SIDS. Uh, it states that in one of the islands in the Pacific, uh, we known as Tokelau, uh, each family owns a canoe themselves. And this canoe is it's like the main source of uh, power, food, or whatever income in the, in the family itself. So uh, leading up to it, a canoe is made of canava trees for, that last four years and can be passed on from generation to generation. Therefore, the person who sits at the end is the gray hair or the old man, uh, who happens to be the leader. 
and a person who has acknowledged has knowledge in caring for his or her community but the kinu is powered by the energy of young people so the story of the kinu reminds us about sustainable development we are all families on this great kinu of the world journeying together towards a better future it sails under your guidance as we battle with our passion our as in youth so having said that i would like to also acknowledge uh, their final statement saying that being young does not mean we are insignificant. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was almost like a closing statement already. <laughs> but um, let's uh, go to um, Krishni for your uh, final comment. Um, yes, so I'll be really short. Um, so I just want to say that uh, I'm really impressed by already the level of engagement that young people have had uh, during the prep, the preparations to the uh, youth forum and the SEEDS conference in general. And I think that SEEDS youth can be the voice from all the SEEDS uh, regions for greater youth engagement at island level to create, the to create the impetus for a climate safe world. And why just not a climate safe world, but for a better world in general. So I think we should really give youth opportunities to show that they can do something and so um, I thank you all for this great opportunity today so thank you uh, we thank you and now um, Karuna uh, for your closing statements yes thank you Matt um, first of all I just want to um, um, yes I want to add on um, what Mr. Wu said and in closing, I'd like to say that it's really important for us as young people to raise awareness of, of the International Year of SIDS and the upcoming summer conference. Um, and I think peer-to-peer -peer mentoring is a very good uh, way of doing it. We go and speak to young people because we all know that uh, young people who are not involved in the process may either not be aware of the process or they may find it quite cumbersome, you know, when we talk about policy, language and stuff. So one example, uh, one example I'd like to share with you in Mauritius that uh, we're going to different schools and colleges and universities and explaining to young people um, how can they, uh, what is the summer conference, what's the international year of SIDS, what SIDS is as a term itself and how can they be, and how can they contribute to the conference even if they're not going. So that's one example which um, I'd, I'd um, request um, young people to um, do in their country. Um, secondly, uh, what I want to say in closing is please don't forget to um, join the mailing list of the UN Major Group of Children and Youth because that's where we're sharing um, all the latest information about the SIS conference, but that's also where we'll be discussing um, what our position is going to be in the conference, how are we going to participate, uh, what will be in the outcome document, what, what our lobby points would be, and, uh, e and uh, this is usually done online, so um, please join the mailing list, and the website is childrenyouth.org. And finally, uh, very quickly, I just want to say that um, uh, in with regards to the question that we had on women empowerment, uh, the, the, what I've seen in Mauritius is that when we conduct activities, when we ask for uh, volunteers, most of them are women. So women are generally more receptive um, uh, when it comes to um, being engaged in sustainable development. I think the issue is when we reach on the decision-making level. So um, the message I'd like to give here as a woman to other women is please don't restrict yourselves and don't be afraid to um, take positions of power. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Now for uh, Mr. Wu, um, please, if you would give us your closing statements. Well, thank you very much. I think being our last speaker is that you do have to speak anymore. And I first of all, I would like to um, thank uh, sincerely all our distinguished panelists. Uh, time is flying fast, and time is al almost over. But the subject is by no means exhausted. However, I would like to say I appreciate the participation and the involvement of the youth representatives from the three regions. And your energy, your knowledge about this subject matter are very impressive. Thank you again for your participation. The second point I wish to make is that as a Secretary General, judging by my own observation, the third international conference on SIDS will be a great success. Just give you an example. Normally, the conference like this would be dragged along by 
and finish the negotiations on the outcome document. But this time we are doing quite differently. The member states have already reached the consensus on the outcome document. That is unprecedented achievement in recent years for our international conference. Now when member states meet in uh, Apia, some more, they will concentrate on the plenary meetings on exchange of views and also on the possible projects and uh, generating a sustainable partnership. So that will make a great difference. Third point I would like to raise is that uh, I would like to urge all of the young people through your representatives and through this platform that if you have any partnership project, you may have yourself registered at the UNDESA uh, website. And if there's a possibility, you may go to some more to present your partnership project to the international community and to the people of Samoa. And last but not least, I would like to say thank you very much for those who are watching this discussion uh, the world over. And I do believe you will follow the third international conference on seas as closely as what you are doing now. And we most welcome you to pay attention to the SEAS conference. And last but not least, I would like to say thank you some more for your hospitality, for your successful preparation. Thank you. And of course, thank you, moderator, for your wonderful work. Thank you very much. Uh, I also want to thank all of the panelists and all of our viewers. Uh, our time is up, and I just want to say that you can follow uh, the Samoa conference via social media. We'll be doing a lot of uh, social media from there, and you can find all information on the conference on uh, SIDS2014.org. Um, yeah, I'm sure um, we'll have more Hangouts, and uh, keep on following us. Thank you.